Hi, welcome back to the Custom Saber Shop on YouTube. My name is Rob, and this video is going to basically just break down and show you how to build the control box for your LS6 Saber. There's a couple of little tips and tricks that I'll walk you through in order to make this a really simple assembly so that it'll work perfectly for your Saber. A couple of things that you're uh, going to need for this project, uh, a Dremel with a grinding bit is really, really helpful. Uh, some hobby files. Um, uh, this is a square file, just a small hobby file. You can get these a lot of different places. If you don't have this, um, some uh, maybe 100 or 200 grit sandpaper that uh, is folded over like a, a stick or something like that. You can make your own little temporary file. I'm going to be using a hobby knife, something like this. I'm going to be using the pencil eraser to disassemble this, but also to clean some of the contacts. And uh, I'm going to be using some electrical tape, but of course you can use the tape that's supplied with the kit. Um, I think that's about it. Maybe a little watch screwdriver just for some poking and prodding and things like that. We're ready to get going. Now one of the first things I like to do is we've got a lot of little parts here. Is I like to get some kind of a like a little plastic lid and uh, just something that's going to keep these things from sneaking away while, while we're working. Small powerful magnets can be really tricky to work with because they're easy to lose, they're hard to get a grip on. Um, putting them in the hole can separate it. That's a good way to separate them. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a tiny little bit of glue, like I did in my other video. I'm going to put a little glue dab on a piece of paper. I've got a couple of them here. Rather than put a glob of glue on, because sometimes you can't control it when it comes out. I'm going to be using a Gorilla Glue. Uh, you can use any kind of super glue, but we want something that's fairly quick drying. Now I don't want to use pliers to pick those up. I don't want to use my fingers, so we're going to try something. that uh, We're going to use a little bit of the tape that comes with your kit. And I'm just going to pick up that magnet. I'm going to dab it in the glue, just the end, and then I'm going to put it in place. And of course the tape is not magnetic, so it comes off nice. We'll give this some time to dry, and then uh, just that tiny little dab of glue is probably the, all that we need. So I want to set this part aside and we'll move on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to prep this part, the box itself. Now I've already tested it with the, the battery in there. You, you may notice, I'm going to see if I can get my little watch screwdriver here, there's a tiny little switch there. That's basically like an on and off switch. So if it's not working, that could be your culprit. So you can set the whole thing off um, if you wish. Uh, but what we're going to do, is obviously you can see the batteries are in there, but I'm going to take it apart first. And one of the ways you can do that, the circuit board needs to slide out. And if you look through the curved bottom part, you can see the circuit board's right there, and you can press on it with something gentle. So I kind of anchor the corner on my mat, and I can hold it fairly fairly snug. And I can just gently press, and I can feel it start to give. The nice, the, uh, nice thing about the eraser is it doesn't damage circuit surfaces, um, contacts, and it gives you a little bit of a little bit of rubbering. You don't want to grab it with the pliers and pull it out. That's not uh, not helpful. There we go. Should be able to pop the whole thing right out gently. You can see the batteries come out too. Now in the instructions it says to tape the batteries, so I've done exactly what the instructions said, tape the batteries. So uh, what I haven't done is I haven't placed a piece of tape across the uh, switch contacts, so I'm going to do that now. Now the instructions say to sand those, uh, or file them. I'm going to use a piece of 220 sandpaper and I'm just going to uh, Use that. I'm going to gently go over that. I imagine that's just because uh, you don't want any sharp points picking out that are going to go through your tape and uh, touch metal and create uh, any kind of a short circuit. So one way that you can do that is obviously do that. You can use the tape that's supplied uh, or you could just use electrical tape which is actually made for uh, shorting or keeping things from shorting out. There's my piece. Lay it on about like so, and then put this down, trace out the excess tape, and I'm ready to go, oh, more or less. There we go. So the next thing to do is to you know put the battery in and place that, that in, in here. But um, what I've realized is that this little gold strip on the one side of the circuit board is what creates the contract on the positive side and it sits in this little groove here. So I'm just going to take my watch screwdriver and I'm just going to rub 
any kind of residue or anything that's kind of stuck in the metal as a result of its a manufacturing process you can kind of get a better contact. I'm also going to take my pencil eraser and I'm going to just rub it down the gold side of that contact. I'm going to make sure that uh, I want to make sure my tape actually doesn't extend over that and it kind of does a little bit. That could interfere with my contact, so I'm just going to just going to peel that back and slice a little bit off. Don't want any tape residue on your the gold part. And when you're ready, take your battery that's uh, been taped together. Of course, you want to do positive side down. That's the big flat side down, so you got the little button kind of looking up. And then uh, you just drop that in where it's supposed to go. Working on a flat surface again is really helpful. You want to press that in all the way, gently but firmly. And we're ready to give it a test. So we're going to switch that little switch. I'm going to press a button. Oh, I saw something there. I saw a little light up and it stopped. So I'm going to check my contact and make sure it's pressed in. Try it again. No, well, it's not working. That means you're not getting good contact. So I popped it out and I explored and it turns out I had a tiny little bit of tape residue in the contact there. So when I took out the tape residue, cleaned it up and put it back in, I'm getting it functioning now. You know, it's the red LED, green LED, static, switch over and they can go. So button caps, let's get those, uh, let's get those on first. Now, if you look at the, the bottom of the button cap, where a hole is, I don't know if you can see, it's uh, one side's flat and one side's oval, and it really corresponds to the shape that it's actually got to work with. So there's a right way and a wrong way to put these on. Now, even when you glue them on, they're still going to travel a little bit. So I'm just going to test fit things here. And try our buttons, they work. Good. So we're just going to get some glue. Now, you can use a same as I've used like a Gorilla Glue on those and a very, very small dab, or you can try a different glue. So what I'm going to do for these, actually, I'm going to use a Gorilla Glue for the, for the switch caps, and I'm going to use just a basic white glue for the lenses. And the reason is because uh, I don't want any frosting on my metal, and I, I don't want to uh, damage the look of those really cool glass lenses. So first things first. We'll get our switches lined up the way they're supposed to be. Get our piece of paper, and this is probably the safest, best way to do this, is give yourself a little dab of glue. Now you really want to use very little of the glue because if your glue runs down into your switch, it'll interfere with your switch and wreck your switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my piece of paper and I'm going to drag the surface, just the tips of those little red buttons, over my glue dab. Whoops. I'm going to put it back down double triple check that I'm putting my buttons on correctly flip it over put it into place hold it down flip it over put it into place make sure that they work and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let them sit kinda of line them up the way I like them put a little bit of pressure on and let those sit and come back in a little while as I thought about it more I decided that to do the little glass lenses in here would be best if the electronics were not in it. So I used my pencil again and I carefully popped them back out. Of course you'll notice that my glued switch caps are stayed, have stayed in place. And so that gives me a little bit more freedom to work and uh, actually use the glue that I'm going to use a little bit more. I'm using this, uh, this Weld Bond, it's just a universal white glue. This is just, I think this is just the same white glue as you know, like what you'd use for carpentry or crafts or anything. Um, but you want to make sure that you get one that dries clear. That's kind of the key. There are some of them that dry white. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, I haven't practiced this, so let's see. I'm kind of making it up as I go along. Where's my little screwdriver? I'm going to use this little watch screwdriver. And I'm, I've dabbed some glue here on the piece of paper. And I'm going to carefully apply it inside the hole. And because this glue dries clear, it gives me a little bit more, more freedom to work with. Uh, obviously, I don't want to color outside the lines as much as possible. But I'll show you what we're going to do with that. I actually want to use a little bit more glue than what I have here. 
I'm going to put on, generally the rule of thumb is you use just tiny amounts of glue. But for today, kids, what we're actually going to do is we want to go deep inside those holes. This is the reason why it's better to work with, uh, with the electronics out. You can see the, the glue's gone all the way through my hole. So I can use a piece of paper towel and just wipe off the excess here. Get a good wipe there. And then uh, I'm going to use a little, little tweezer, guys. I'm going to line up my little glass lenses. And we just pop in really nicely when you have them lined up. This reminds me of that toy that we all played with when we were kids. It was like a red and yellow ball with those little yellow shapes that needed to go through. Okay, so I press those through. You notice that the glue has come all the way through the other end. So I'm just going to set this on the table right there. I'm going to use a Q-tip, or you can use your paper towel. I'm just going to wipe out that excess glue. Yoink. Switch it over. Pull out that excess glue so it's nice and flush. Now, and when that dries, this is my thinking, is that's going to be nice and clear. And that's going to give me a really great result for those. So I'll give that some time to dry. Ideally, you probably want to leave this overnight, um, but just for the sake of this project, um, we'll give it some time to dry and then we'll continue. While my white glue is drying, I had an idea. Uh, remember how this gold strip here, I needed to keep it really clean because that goes, that's the, the, the contact for the battery, the uh, positive contact that goes in the base of the, uh, this doodad. Well, I noticed that there's a nice contact point right there. And so this is Cat5 cable that I've just stripped a bit of. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to poke the end of the Cat5 through that little hole. I'm not using my helping hands today. I'm just actually going to uh, set it up like this. And I'm going to give myself a little dab of solder. Oops, came through. So this is kind of an advanced option. This is you got to be really gentle if you're not using clamps. There. Okay. The reason is you touch it with any pressure with your soldering iron, it pushes away. But that's a good solid joint now. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to cut that to about the same length as the big contact on the other side. And I'm going to snip it here and make sure it's not. Then the idea is, you know, this is course reversed it's upside down this is the way we did it before the, uh, the battery is going to go in like this it gives me it gives me another contact there so I should be able to yep there's my LEDs okay for the little advanced uh, copper wire battery hack to work um, you need to clear a bit of a path for the battery to go basically the bottom of that plus sign so I'm just going to fire up my Dremel. I don't know if you can see, but what I've done is I basically just created a little channel where that copper wire is going to sit as it makes contact with the battery. Okay, my glue is not entirely dry, but we're going to keep going on the project just because I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to wait. So I'm going to, in, what I would normally have done, I don't know if you can see it in there, is just scrape off any excess glue with my knife because it will be dry and clear, assuming you wait. Um, but because we didn't wait, it's still a little bit milky and gooey. Just because I don't want that on my, uh, I don't want that on my LEDs. Okay, I'm back from the future to tell you that I've learned that these posts here, particularly this one, I didn't sand it down enough. And when the uh, when the assembly goes together, oops, something like this, it actually makes contact with this top, and uh, sh is a short circuit, and your your lights won't light up. So I'm actually going to sand those down a little bit more, right to the board, almost, and uh, and go from there. Okay, now I've done a better job of uh, sanding these down so they're, uh, they're a lot more flat now. And I'm going to put my, uh, my piece of tape back on. OK, 
Okay, I've also learned that uh, these posts here, these there's six of them, the three top ones, uh, those can also interfere with your circuit. So I'm going to file those down as well. I'm also adding a piece of electrical tape on top of my uh, my big battery contact. Uh, and it folds over there just to keep that uh, from making contact with the top. There's a couple places where the top wants to short circuit. So I'm going to file those uh, top guys down and show you what that looks like. Now I'd normally use my Dremel for this, this kind of thing, but these are really close to the, the LEDs, tiny LEDs, and the components here. So rather than use my Dremel, I'm just going to I'm just going to carefully take some time and just file those down with a little hobby file. As you can see, I've slowly filed those guys down and uh, I'm going to because my LED, there's my red LED here and my multicolor LED here. You can actually take a piece of a, a mat of electrical tape and you can kind of cover over those guys. And cut off the excess tape. So then you've got a nice little barrier there between your filed down posts and uh, and the top where it might short circuit. I want to point out too these these uh, even though these switches are glued, they uh, they spin around and you want to make sure. See, there's the rounded one there. You want to make sure that the flat is on top so that when you pop it in, it goes it goes in properly. Okay, I've also learned that uh, that this little shoulder right here. Uh, makes contact with my circuit board and pushes my tape out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a file and I'm going to file down this. I'll probably, as soon as the camera's off, I'll probably use my Dremel to do this. But I'm using a little hobby file. Of course you can use a little folded piece of sandpaper and take your time and you can file down that shoulder. Okay, the final little bit of prep work you need to do is just to sand away any burrs or any uh, any inconsistencies in this part so that that doesn't interfere with your battery. So you've got that cleared away. You've got this little, whoops, magnetic, this little groove sanded here um, so that doesn't short. And uh, we're ready to assemble. Okay, we're ready for final assembly. And uh, the places I've identified that are potential shorts that I've covered with electrical tape are this back little part of the board. And of course, the, the front part of the board there, the top of the battery holder the back of the circuit board here, that's where we filed down. And I'll just turn this around so you can see. Yeah, the front part of this board here, I put some electrical tape there. Those are just ways to help protect. And so when we're ready to assemble, what I do is just turn it on, hit the button twice so I can see. Uh, now this top will only go on one way, which is kind of nice and handy. So you kind of fit that in, press down. And if you press down really hard and you have no interruptions on your LEDs, that means you've covered all your shorts. So of course this is this uh, is held in by by those magnets that will anchor to the the screws that hold it onto your saber. So right now it's just a pressure fit. When it's on your saber, those magnets will help sit in, and then you can just pop the top off in order to get the circuit board out and change your batteries. Of course you can uh, change your colors and make it do whatever you want. Uh, now the only final thing is sliding in the card. Now the card slides in really easy, so you can you can choose to use a little bit of an adhesive on that. Um, you could use some glue, uh, you could use some two-sided tape. Uh, I'm probably just going to leave mine just sitting in there pressure fit. Uh, you could sand down the front of the card and maybe use a black sharpie on it before you uh, finish up to give it a nice little finished look. So I hope this has been helpful showing you some tips and tricks to assemble your LS6 control box. Thanks again for watching.